What is up, course wizards? Welcome to yet another episode. I am your host Amit, and we're missing Chris today. Chris, where hey, hey, here right. I am. <laughs> How you doing today, Amit? We playing around with the software, trying something new. I'm doing good, Chris. How are you? Doing well, and I know we're talking about apps again today because we do love the apps. This is gonna be good, isn't it? Yes. Today we are talking about our favorite note taking apps and apps that we have heard. And when we say apps, obviously it doesn't mean like an iPhone or Android app, just like a web app. And just note apps that we have heard about in different groups. Chris and I thought it would be a great idea to consolidate that into one giant list. Chris, this even sounds like a great blog to write about, right? It does, yeah. So essentially, when it comes to taking notes on your course, getting gathering research, you want to put it all in one place. And one of the best ways to do that is through using a notes app. And those apps have been around for a long time. Evernote is probably the most popular one, at least over a long period of time. And what they allow you to do is save clips from the web, write your own checklist, put in your own notes all in one central location. And most of them allow you to access it on your computer on your tablet, on your phone, on your watch, right? Just about anywhere with any device you have, you can access them. But they're all a little bit different. They've all got something that makes them tick a little bit better. And it used to be that note apps were all free and most of them still have a free tier. But as with most software, most of them cost now, don't they, Amit? <laughs> yeah, they have to keep the lights on. Yeah. Now, before we get into the apps, I think that reminds me, I've seen some people, I never did this, would have a notebook and mm -hmm. even in the notebook, they had a note taking system where yeah. they would have a legend on each page with like different icons. And then they would just reference those icons back and forth. And that was a cool system. So I think that has been brought online now. So it's available to the masses because that writing down notes can be tedious and it can hurt. <laughs> After a while, your hand starts hurting, you get finger cramps. People still prefer it. Bullet journals are super popular to this day because some people still love being able to have that, that tactile thing of the notebooks in front of them. But yeah, I agree. I did that with the kind of things that you can save online and the amount of material that you can save and the fact that you can even put now video links and all that kind of things in a digital journal. To me, that's the only way to go. Yep. All right, let's get started, Chris. So what's our first? note-taking app here. First, we're going to talk about Apple Notes, and this is what I'm using right now. Apple Notes is free if you subscribe or you're to, if you have a Mac and you're into the whole Mac ecosystem. It's a, it's, it used to be very anemic and now it's gotten a lot better and you can do just about everything you could do in Evernote in Apple Notes. And I used to be with Evernote. I was with Evernote for years. I eventually switched to Apple Notes because one, it's free. Two, it can do almost as much. And it's just, it's simple, right? And that's how Apple does things. They make it very simple, easy to use. It's like that. And so I really like it. So if you own a Mac or and you want to have it on your iPhone and on your Apple Watch and on your tablet, your iPad, Apple Notes is a great way to go. And so you might want to consider that. It lets you create checklists. It lets you have bullet points. It lets you put in links from Safari. lets you drop pictures in there. You can annotate things. Almost all of these note-taking apps allow you to do those things. But Apple Notes, again, it's free. So if you're on a Mac, it's pretty much the way to go, wouldn't you say? Yeah. So I did have a question, Chris. What yeah. if I have an iCloud account, so I just go to iCloud create a net new account, do I still need to be in the Apple ecosystem or can I just use their web app by creating an iCloud? I'm pretty sure you can just use the web app as long as you just go ahead and get an account there, but then you're, and it is on a web app, so you could use it there. And it's, if you have an iPhone, that would be a good way to do it, right? So then you've got it on your phone, you've got it on the web app and you, and that would be useful. I think that's a way you could do it. So yeah, I, good point. I would say that. So we recently had a doctor's call and my, for my son and my wife and I were both taking notes because it was like annual physical uh -huh. appointment. So we, we have a bunch of questions. So I created a note in the Apple notes and we both have iPhones. I shared it with her in text. So whenever I go open my text message with my wife, there's like a line on the top, which says updates made to your note. And I can simply click on it and see what updates she has made. And we were sharing the same note. It was synced. I, that's one thing I like. I also like the ability to scan documents. Yeah. So I use 
use Apple Notes for that. So you just hover your phone with the camera open and if you click scan documents, it does a really good job of scanning yeah. it. Then I go to the web app, download that. And <laughs> I've done this for driver's licenses, for applications where I'm like, how the hell do I do this? Like right. 21st century, there's going to be an easy way. So I use it for that. But Yeah, you can create a hierarchy, right? So you can also create folders and put things in folders. And also they have the ability, if you take your mouse and put it down in the lower right-hand corner on your Mac, it will create what's called a quick note, which is a quick note that you can quickly type something in and it'll go right into Apple Notes for you. So it keeps you from even having to open the app if you need to take a quick note. The two cons, I would say, one, it's Apple only. Apple right? only. You have to be yeah. the ecosystem. Two, I don't think you can use this as a second brain. It doesn't have the contextual interlinking of notes. Like you can't write a note and easily reference another note within that note to yeah. then reference a third note within that second. Like I think that is missing. To your point, it's a simple note-taking app. Yes. It's not going to replace something complex. No, and that's it. what you bring up is that this is the next evolution of notes, right? Is the ability to have all this cross-linking and interlinking and seeing the relationships between notes. And you'll see as we go down through this list today that it, it progressively as the programs get more complex, they can do things like that. But it also means they're more complex. So you just have to decide what you want. I have tried some of the more complex solutions and we'll talk about that when we get there. Honestly, I just found them too difficult for what I wanted to do because generally I just want to keep notes. And so that's why I like Apple Notes. I might be able to, I might be able to convert you tonight, Chris. We will. Oh yeah? Okay. We will. Um, we, I, please do. I mean, I've been, <laughs> I, I'm tempted. <laughs> okay. But one thing I haven't liked about Apple Notes, just one last thing about it, is that sometimes it seems to run a little slow to me because you're putting all that information in that database. One thing I loved about Evernote is that it was lickety split fast and Apple Notes, sometimes I'm feeling like it slows down a little bit, but it's probably perceptible. I was going to say, what kind of lag are we talking here? Is Are we talking about AOL dial-up speeds or just a lag no. that we don't have the patience for? Yeah, no, it's more like you click click on it and then you have to wait just a mil, half a second. And with Evernote, it was like you, there was absolutely, there was no perceptible wait when I was searching there. Now, I will say when Evernote came out with the newer version, the, which is the current version, there's a percept perceptible wait on that. And the more complex, again, the more difficult they become. Should we talk that, about Evernote while we're at it? Let's talk about Evernote, yeah. All right, so Evernote is probably the big king of note-taking apps, right? It's been around for a long time. And for a long time, it could not be unseated. Everyone I, I wanted like, Evernote. Is Evernote like Zynga games where they had their heyday and now they don't? Or do you think they still are in their heyday? They're still very popular. But the thing that Evernote has going for them is that it works with everything because it's been around so long. It's just assumed that if you're going to connect with some kind of note-taking app out there, it's going to work with Evernote. And so a lot of people love it because of that. The other reason a lot of people use it is because, and I discovered this, it's very difficult to get out of Evernote. The, it's very difficult to export your notes and get them out and just have them in another format like Apple Notes or a Markdown format. It was like enough for me of a disconcerting feeling when I couldn't get out of Evernote to make me realize I would never go back to Evernote or a closed system again. It needs to be able to at least export in a markdown or some kind of format like that. Now, Evernote will export, I believe, in an HTML format. But again, you don't keep all that fancy stuff you put in there when you're doing that. And so that's why I stopped using Evernote ultimately is because I didn't like that I was so grand in there. And I went to one called Bear before I went to Apple Notes. Why don't we talk about Bear next? Let's do uh, it. So I will say I was using Evernote too. I forgot why I stopped using it. I think there was like a mass exodus. Yeah. <laughs> I was just part of that exodus. I was like, oh my God, everyone's leaving Evernote. And I don't think I should be on this platform. I forget the reason why. So before we get onto Bear, one thing I wanted to talk about on Evernote is pricing. So we Oh yeah, about, let's look at it. Yeah. Let me open up my screen. So we did talk about Apple Notes, which is free. And then Evernote is obviously they want to make a living. So they're not free. 
and I'm on their website here. It's affordable though. And they have a wonderful web clipper that can clip anything off the web. Yep. They have a web clipper. Like you said, it's fast. Finding yeah. it is super. You can organize clips, search, sync notes, share, have tasks, et cetera, et cetera. See, but all yeah. those things are pretty standard. That's the thing. I think Evernote went through this trouble where they just haven't been as innovative as a lot of these other platforms have. Yep. And then if I click on comparing the plans, you have the free version, which is syncs up to two days of activity or I don't know what, up to two devices, not two days. Yeah. So you, oh, that's why I left it because it was two devices. So yeah. you will have your mobile and your desktop. I'm like, I, at the time I was also using my iPad. So I, okay, that's coming back now. <laughs> I, I love that this is a feature. It says, take great notes included in the free plan. <laughs> That's right. So their prices have gone up. When I left, it was four ninety nine a month, and it's now seven ninety nine a month for the personal plan and nine ninety nine for the professional. I want to say for four ninety nine, I was getting the equivalent of what's in the professional plan. Boy, that seems expensive to me, especially when there are free alternatives or very low cost alternatives. Bear, which we're about ready to talk about here, is fifteen dollars a year. So $10 a month is very expensive. Bear is a nice app. It's all marked down. And they, last I used it, they did not have a easy way to put it in without using and seeing the markdown, which I ultimately, I didn't really like, but it is very fast. Everything's in markdown. So you can easily transport it to any other app you want. And your notes will still be fully intact. And Bear, as I said, is $15 a year. So super cheap. It's a little over a dollar. Good app, but it is Mac only. So it's Mac, iPhone, iPad only. So again, if you're in the Mac ecosystem, you don't like Apple Notes, it doesn't do enough for you, try Bear. Chris, what is Markdown? Okay, so Markdown is when you want to write things like headings or italics or bolds, any kind of formatting you want to do. It's a universal formatting language, I guess is the way I would say it. Okay. And so if you want to write a note in Markdown and put in headers and bullets and different kinds of paragraphs, you can use Markdown to do that and it'll translate from one program to another. Whereas like when I had thing in it, things in Evernote and I had bullets and I had tables and all that, half of that didn't translate correctly. And it really is a bummer when you try to move around. So then you went from Evernote to Bear and then Apple Notes? Yeah. So I went to Evernote to Bear and then to Apple Notes. By the time I got to Bear, most of my good stuff was stripped out. And then, but I, and I probably would have stayed with Bear had they had, didn't make you stay in a markdown looking format all the time. Uh, uh, I, I didn't really like that. And then of course, Apple Notes is free. So I thought, eh, I'm just going to keep it simple. Apple Notes works with all my Apple devices. That's what happens sometimes when you get into the Mac ecosystem, you just give up hope if you work with anything else because <laughs> it all works so well together. It really does. It works wonderfully together, but then you're stuck there. So uh, there's something interesting I heard recently on a, one of a podcast I listened to called My First Million. Now we're promoting other podcasts. We're so, such great <laughs> podcasters. They were talking about the creator of the iPad said that you don't have to be good at everything. You just have to be great at a few things. Yeah. And the example this person gave was iPad doesn't have a USB drive iPad doesn't have half the things all the fancy Android tablets has, but the things it does have, it does amazingly well. Yes. I was like, that is so true. Like people, Tesla doesn't have half the things all these fancy cars have today, mm. but Tesla is great at just a few things. So I think that's a lesson for all of the course creators is don't try to be good at everything. Yeah. Don't try to be good at all the social media platforms. Just be great at a few things to be so great at it that no one can overtake you. No one can beat you because you're the best. That's good. That's good. So the next one we have here, Chris, is Microsoft OneNote. I think this is used one for business people. Because I, I used this one for a while too. <laughs> yeah. If you're working for a company, you get the whole office suite. Mm. Microsoft Notes come with it. So I think this is more popular in the business world than it might be in the course creation world. But it's free for everyone to use. And let me pull up their site. Let me reshare here. 
OneNote is also a little different from the others in that it looks like a binder, right? Yeah. It's got that look of tab. You've got tabs and sections and subsections. And some people really like that. The people who like OneNote a lot, it's, yeah. they're very enthusiastic about it. Yeah, here are the binders. So yeah, let the for those of you who are watching this on YouTube, and if you're not watching it on YouTube, I think you should. And while you're there on YouTube, you might as well subscribe. And while you're just kidding. All right. <laughs> so here you can see like the work notebook, you have a meetings and all these tabs and within them you have the sub tabs. So yeah, it can get out of control, but I see. And then of course it's, they're displaying here that it's made iPads and other tablets because you can draw easily. You can have your fancy drawing pen. So you can have a mix of typed notes and notes handwritten on top of the typed notes. So you still have that handwritten look and feel to it. Yes. And there's no pricing here because it's, it's free. And here it says, see Microsoft 365 plans. So if you do have Microsoft 365, one note comes with it. I can tell because this is one of the more popular ones. I've used it when, with my previous job with the previous company, I stopped using it with the new company that I'm with because of the one that I use now, which we'll get to in a few. Uh, but yeah, I've not heard bad things about this one. Have you heard anything bad about it? If you use the Microsoft suite, it works really well with that, right? If you're into Word and Excel and you use Outlook, right? If you use all those things, it really interfaces with all of those very nicely. I liked it. I thought it was a decent app, but it felt to me like a lot of apps do. And that is where they can have a little bit of bloat, right? It's just, you feel like, okay, this thing's heftier than it needs to be. And I'm okay with that when it comes to Word. I use Word all the time because I, it is so feature rich and I like that. But with, with OneNote, I didn't really like that. I wanted it to be a little slicker and swifter. Yep. So that, that's why I didn't go with it. But like I said, the people who like it and who, who are the power users really like it. And it, 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 it's cross-platform. It's cross-platform. Android, platform. Apple, yes. app, everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It, it's a good piece of software. All right. Next one we are talking about is Notion. And most people have heard of this. If you've not notion.so, check it out. They have a very generous free plan. I think it used to be thousand blocks for free. Now it's unlimited pages and blocks. You can share it. You can sync across devices. Even on the free plan, they have API access, which is awesome. The restrictions on the free plan is the file uploads is just 5 MB. So let me share my screen again. Chris. Now th this is where things get a little more complicated. Notion is not for the faint of heart. Don't scare our viewers. And oh, it scared me. I used it for a little while again too. I played around with it a bit anyway, and it, it was difficult, but yeah. I know you really I, like it. Don't you? I, I do. I'm not as good and as religious using it as I can be, but you, if you're looking at our screen here, you have the notes here. You can easily search. There's the search functionality. You can sort it. There's like millions of YouTube videos on how to use Notion. You can have a Kanban board view where you can drag and drop cards. You can use it for content planning. I think this is great for like people who want to set their course structure, how the lessons and modules should be. There's this meeting notes. So you can use it for meeting notes, website publishing, internal Wikipedias, design docs roadmap, company home, like the possibilities are endless, Chris. So well, I that's, school... that's okay. what's so great about Notion is that the possibilities are endless, but that's also what makes it so difficult because you can make it do about anything you want, but you have to learn how to make it do anything you want. And that's where most people get tripped up. Yep. Yeah. So I'm actually looking at one of their notes, right? You can go to their website. You can play along, select a template start even start clicking into it and see so here this template has some checklists it has some bullet points it has goals listed same thing that you can use markup everything starts with a forward slash so if you do a forward slash and start typing a command you can create a page within a page within a page it goes to infinity yeah. so it, it is pretty cool it can be used more as a lightweight crm versus just a note-taking app and this thing has received lots of funding. It's not going anywhere. They have a web clipper. They have desktop apps, mobile apps. Just you name it, they have it. They're like Evernote's bigger version, bigger, better. Yeah, yeah, that's good. 
So the now the apps we've talked about so far, I would say are they're not the ones that do a whole lot of interlinking. Maybe Notion does a little bit. Apple Notes there, OneNote, Evernote, Notion. These are, I guess, the first generation kind of founding kind of notes, right? The note apps. The second half of what we're going to talk about, and I'm at we're at 22 minutes now. I'm wondering if we should do this in podcast, the next podcast, make it a part two. We're going to talk about this new generation of apps that can do things like cross-linking and some fancy things like that. Yeah, let's do it in the next one. All right. Thank you for listening. Let me go ahead and just give you a quick rundown again, in case you wanted to go look these up yourself. First, we have Apple Notes. It comes free on Mac devices, and it syncs in between all your Mac devices. And so if you're using a Mac, definitely try Apple Notes. It's completely free. There's no reason not to. I also recommend Bear. Bear is a markdown for Mac devices. And Bear allows you to create notes in Markdown, which is easily referable to other apps, which is nice in case you ever decide you want to go with something else. Of course, if you're on Windows devices, you might use Microsoft OneNote, although it does work with Mac devices also. OneNote is a very good piece of software, though it is a, it, it's a little different. It uses a binder look instead of a regular just note-taking look. And then, of course, there's the Big Daddy, which is Evernote. A lot of people have loved to Evernote over the years. It's a very solid app. It's starting to get a little more innovative. They went through a bit of a dry spell, but a lot of people like it. It works on pretty much everything, and everything connects with it. So it's worth trying out. And then there's Notion. Notion is the last one we talked about that's a little more complicated, but you can make it do anything you want. But did we say what Notion cost? Yeah, let me look at their pricing. Oh, so the, the one plan that I was talking about is a free plan, and that has unlimited pages, unlimited blocks, and then the personal plan starts at four dollars a month if you pay annually, so forty eight bucks, about fifty bucks a year, or five dollars a month if you pay monthly. Yeah, m most of the apps seem to be. I would say the average price is around five dollars a month, unless it's free. And and on most of the apps, you could probably get by with a free tier for quite a while. All right. That, that's exciting. That's good stuff. With that, thank you everyone for listening, for watching us. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. We will catch you on part two, where we dive into some crazy note-taking apps, second brain. And till then, keep creating. See you on the flip side. Bye. Bye.